Herzlich willkommen to this special session of Meeting of the Minds, in which we want to talk to you about the treasures of the Tellurian. My name is Henrike Lehnemann. And my name is Emma Huber. I'm professor of medieval German literature and linguistics and teach history of the book to the master students of the Faculty of Medieval and Modern Languages. And I'm the subject librarian for German and the subject team lead for digital humanities at the Taylor Institution Library. We have been working together for the last six years on making the extraordinarily rich holdings of German books in the Tellurian more accessible. We would have loved to take you inside for today's meeting and show the pamphlets, manuscripts and unusual objects firsthand. But since this is not possible, we will try to make the best of the situation by taking you on a virtual tour. This is also quite appropriate since we've been increasingly exploring the treasures of the Taylorian together with the students through digital editions. So showing you the objects online is also part of the teaching method we've been using. In a moment, we are going to take you through a slideshow and screenshots from the Taylor editions, but we wanted to start with the biggest and also largest treasure of the Taylorian, the Taylor Institute itself. The impressive neoclassical building was purpose-built as a library for languages, with a design that celebrates multilingualism, Europe and literature. Here above us are the personifications of four European languages. From left to right, Italian with a torch, French with a cornucopia, the German head in hand and Spain with a spear. I particularly like the fact that German literature is represented as Land der Dichterinnen und Denkerinnen, with a gesture that was used by Walter von der Vogelweide to signal his thinking about how to live in the world, and is still used today in times of online conferences. The picture on the top left is from a lecture I recorded via Zoom last year with a former writer in residence, Ulrike Dresner, who had translated poems by Walter von der Vogelweide. So what, uh, Walter writes, Ich saß auf eine Steine und dachte Bein mit Beine. Gar auf satzt ich den Ellenbogen. Ich hätt in meine Hand gesmoggen das Kinn und ein min Wange. Du dachte ich mir viel ange, wie man zerwerte sollte leben. Engraved on the pedestals for the figures, are the names of three authors for each language. For German, we have Herder, Schiller and Goethe. They act as calling cards for the treasures that lie within. And so we will invite you now to pass the threshold into the literary treasure trove, starting off with an encounter with Goethe. Welcome inside the Tellurian. Many of you will recognize uh, room two, one of the representative lecture rooms in the Tellurian, which is benignly overlooked by the bust of Goethe, currently um, above the screen that shows Reformation 2017 at the Tellurian Library, an event that actually took place in 2016 after my inaugural uh, lecture. We had a round table where we wanted to launch a uh, ambitious project for the quincentenary of the German Reformation, which um, happened in uh, 2017 to remember 500 years ago, the publication of the 95 Thesis. And you see on um, in the room, a group of uh, visitors for the inaugural lecture and also one of the other big treasures of the Tellurian, namely its students. And uh, so the uh, four panelists sitting there are um, three graduate and one undergraduate uh, student who had each prepared an edition of a Reformation pamphlet. And that was the start of the whole digital edition series, which has uh, now expanded to cover several dozens um, editions over the course of the years. Uh, room two is also used, overlooked by Goethe again, to showcase uh, small projects and 
reflect on the history of teaching German in Oxford. So um, the next slide is um, from the visitor of the ambassador in 2019, um, Dr. Peter Wittig, uh, who came to uh, learn about the history of uh, German in Oxford. And uh, we presented him with a, a small exhibition of several objects uh, set up by Emma Huber, mainly actually coming from a special collection, the collection of the first professor of German, Professor Fiedler. So Professor Fiedler was an ideal person to, um, to show to the ambassador. Um, as he spent his whole life working on Anglo-German relations and international understanding more generally. Um, okay, so um, this quote is from an article from 1910, where Fiedler is talking about the power of the study of languages to remove international prejudice, to take the student beyond the limits of their own nationality, to make them conscious of the solidarity of mankind. And Fiedler believes that such understanding would be a pledge for the peace of the world and would make war more and more impossible. Um, so Fiedler, as well as being passionate about the study of languages, um, really showed great dedication to his students and he was a very well-loved teacher. So these are two examples of correspondence with Professor Fiedler. One is from the future Edward VIII, um, apologising for not being able to attend a tutorial because he needs to go hunting. Um, Fiedler took Edward VIII on a grand tour of um, Germany in 1913, where he was determined to show off the cultural treasures of Germany, um, but was often frustrated as the prince much preferred social engagements. Um, there's also a telegram here from the German poet Stadler, um, who was a student in Oxford and who had got into trouble with his college for submitting his thesis rather late. Um, Professor Fiedler interceded on his behalf. There's a photograph down there of Stadler, which is also in the archive. Um, the Professor Fiedler in interceded on his behalf with the college and enabled him to have an extension. And this telegram is assuring Professor Fiedler that the thesis was duly sent off yesterday. So, um, yeah, Fiedler was very well loved by all his students, wherever, whatever their nationality and wherever they came from. He was also very innovative in his teaching methods. Um, this is a recording of a language course that was recorded in 1929. You may recognise the logo of the recording company. Um, and this was quite an innovative thing to do. So recording uh, for private citizens had only been available for a couple of years. And Fiedler uses this new technology to record some um, vocabulary that would be useful to people traveling in Germany at that time. So there's um, phrases for um, requesting your luggage to be transferred to a hotel, for having a fire made up in your room, um, for ordering food from the, um, the buffet car on a, on a train and so on. You can listen to the recording actually under tiny URL uh, Fiedler's collection, and uh, you'll hear his uh, rolling German um, accent, a really deep, uh, nice uh, German voice, with a, which he says, Schaffner, ist dies der Zug nach Köln? Ist dies ein durchgehender Wagen? And then he changes, he has underlined in blue where he changes um, voice to uh, pretend it's uh, the uh, Schaffner actually answering. In einer halben Stunde, or in einer Viertelstunde, and uh, quite relevant now, um, you have to show your passport. Sie müssen Ihren Pass vorzeigen. Um, so um, Fiedler was the first professor of German, but he was by no means the first uh, prominent Germanist in Oxford. And um, in a way, um, this uh, figure might be um, the most prominent holder of uh, the chair in German, um, reaching international um, fame with his study of Sanskrit. It's uh, Friedrich Max Müller, and um, he was the son of the German poet 
um, uh, Wilhelm Müller, famous for providing the texts for uh, uh, things like Die Winterreise by Schubert and Schöne Müllerin. And you can see this dashing romantic in the picture on the right hand side, who then uh, transformed in an, uh, into an Oxford don captured in Vanity Fair with the signs of language, but also was internationally recognized. You see him with the Ordre pour le Mérite and the Bayerische Maximilians uh, Orden um, shortly before his death um, on the left hand side. But what makes him particularly important for our talk today is uh, that he brought with him the romantic belief in studying um, the materiality of uh, German literature and language. So he asked um, the librarian to acquire original uh, publications in Germany, um, medieval manuscripts, uh, uh, prints um, and books from the 18th century, but particularly focusing on the uh, crucial um, development in the Reformation, where print um, publication uh, exponentially grew in, in Germany. So he was responsible for the wealth of Reformation pamphlets that are now collected in the Taylor Institution Library. This is from um, an exhibition that we did three years ago uh, on a similar Meeting Minds occasion, an open day for alumni, where um, Emma and I just um, displayed in the map room, uh, the graduate study room upstairs, you see the uh, huge um, the tomes uh, behind uh, the pamphlets, all the pamphlets printed in 1530 to um, give a spot the difference uh, challenge to the participants to see how uh, different title pages are recycled and echo each other and to, sheer, uh, to show the sheer um, growth of publication taking place in the 1520s and 30s. And our aim is actually with the Taylor editions to chart this development from the publication of the 95 Thesis in uh, 1517 through uh, then to the publication of the large uh, volume of the uh, Bible in the last edition in uh, 1545. So there is still quite a way for us to cover edition wise. Um, I've put on um, the Playmobil figure of Luther, um, partly to show uh, that uh, this was um, qu quite a popular <laughs> event. Uh, Luther has his own hashtag, Little Luther, uh, on social media, and um, that helped us also to reach out. But um, partly to show that uh, the visual um, iconography remains uh, astonishingly stable from the schöne Confitemini, which you see left next to the Playmobil figure, to um, the 2017 uh, figurine, which is actually made up of a, a police hat, a vampire mantle, and a women's uh, wig, but it, it fits quite nicely with a uh, reform movement. And partly for scale, because um, what we wanted also to show in our digital edition is still the materiality of how um, uh, easily this could be carried around, distributed, um, bought and passed on. And um, you have the opportunity to do some, uh, fold your own uh, experiments with it. We'll uh, try to show that live in front of the Taylorian and later in the Q&A session. So these pamphlets are um, conversation starters, as it were. So they are meant to really um, spark discussion. And they have certainly been uh, successful in doing that. So on the left hand side, you see the students you have just seen also at the inaugural event in 2016 with their um, 
the first editions. And, and on the right hand side, uh, you see the recording of the uh, most recent launch we had um, in November uh, 2020, exactly 500 years after Von der Freiheit eines Christenmenschen was published, probably the most influential uh, Lutheran publication, the bestseller of the 16th century. And uh, you see in the screenshot that we have always uh, tried to follow Fiedler's lead in making things accessible, not just visually, but also audibly. So uh, we have combined each of the digital editions um, of the Reformation pamphlets uh, with a recording, uh, a relay reading, we've called it, of uh, the full text through students and colleagues uh, from Oxford. So uh, Julia is a current uh, second year student of uh, German, starting off uh, the reading with zum Ersten, dass wir gründlich mögen erkennen, was ein Christenmensch sei, the thesis. Ein Christenmensch ist ein freier Herr über alle Dinge und niemand untertan. Ein Christenmensch ist ein Dienstbarknecht aller Dinge und jedermann untertan. Um, now we'll go slightly more into detail of these uh, three full-scale editions of Reformation pamphlets, which we've done also with a print-on-demand publication, so you can actually buy these editions if you don't want to read them open access. They are available for uh, between three and five pounds um, each. And the first one we did was um, Martin Luther's Zendbrief from Dolmetschen, um, because it's um, a seminal text for translation theory. And the oldest um, set text that has never changed since its introduction. So it was introduced exactly on the 400th anniversary of the publication of the 95 Thesis in uh, 1917 under, under Fiedler. Um, and it's still taught on the module, uh, the paper four on uh, historical linguistics to teach the development of uh, German, but also uh, introduce complex discussions of what it means to translate well. You can uh, view it on the editions MML or XAC uh, UK. And um, what you have um, there is a transcription. Um, so the facsimile of the uh, copy in the Taylor Institution Library, a transcription a new English translation um, with a scholarly uh, apparatus and uh, footnotes. And in the about section, we have linked in elements such as the recording uh, of the uh, whole Zen brief, but also um, additional blog posts and further material. And then uh, 500 years after the publication of the Sermon von Ablass und Gnade. We did um, this uh, first German publication that went uh, viral of, of Luther. So this is a German reformulation of the 95 Theses to make them more publicly available. And um, here you see under resources, the fold your own uh, pamphlet, because this is actually just one broad side that you fold it twice and uh, could buy for the price of a coffee to go, more or less. Uh, actually, few copies survive despite the high number of outputs because these were material designed to be um, used up um, and passed on. And then the most recent um, publication I just mentioned was von der Freiheit eines Christenmenschen. And the Tellorian actually has three different editions of uh, this seminal text, which also allows a compare and contrast approach for the students. So different students have edited different versions of the text. One of the library interns has edited a Latin version that also is held by the 
Taylor Institution Library. And all of these can now be uh, combined on screen and are accessible also for those of you who can't come now to the Taylorian. So what are we planning for the near future? The next Reformation pamphlet is due in June, exactly again on its 500th anniversary, and it will be a very polemical text, the Passional Christi und Antichristi. And um, this launch will be embedded for the first time in a whole series of launches of digital editions um, done across the languages by different uh, students from the history of the book. You can um, download the exact program on our um, student-led blog, History of the Book, MML or XAC um, UK. And that will uh, cover a vast range of material from the Taylorian. For example, the first Spanish translation of Plutarch's life of uh, famous paper by to uh, students of Spanish. It will uh, cover uh, Ship of Fools um, edition, um, so a variety of languages. Which brings me um, to an overview of exhibitions uh, that we had from uh, beyond uh, the Reformation period. And, um, I particularly liked uh, this exhibition that celebrated having the Japanese German writer in residence Yoko Tabada visiting. And that was an exhibition about multilingualism called Von der Muttersprache zur Sprachmutter, a title of one of Yoko Tabada's uh, books. And um, we combined it with multilingual books from across the Taylor Institution Library. An ongoing uh, project is um, the White Rose uh, project, which started again as a Taylor uh, editions um, series and um, has now um, gone uh, beyond the Taylorian to encompass international cooperation. Um, it's led by Dr. Alex Lloyd, one of uh, the tutors in German, and it again involved an exhibition of books in the Taylorian um, that inspired uh, the resistance group Weiße Rose in writing uh, their pamphlets. So um, to end our whistle-stop tour of Treasures of the Taylorian, um, we return actually to Goethe and to one of the oddest treasures of the Taylorian and, and her enter over back to Emma. Yes, yeah, so this is, as um, Henrique says, one of our, our oddest treasures, um, a lock of Goethe's hair. This is a very well attested um, lock. We've got a good provenance history such that the um, great great grandson of the donor um, came into the library very recently and was able to give some more information about it. So that was John Falk. You can see the name of his ancestor on the on the envelope there. Goethe's hair given to me by my aunt um, of Weimar in 1881. Um, so we've got a, a really good um, provenance for this. It was um, cut off Goethe um, when he went to the hairdressers after he'd been ill. So his hair had presumably grown a um, considerable amount. So like all of us now, we've been looking forward <laughs> to getting back to the hairdresser. <laughs> and having a good trim and um, it wasn't uncommon for locks of hair to be to be kept uh, at that time and this lock of hair has come to be in the possession of the Taylorian library as, as I say one of our more unusual objects along with a fragment of the Berlin Wall and some other non-book objects that we have in our collection. Yeah I, I like as a medievalist how it's really presented uh, like a relic so you have the smaller envelope on the left hand side with a uh, German inscription, Goethe's uh, Haar, uh, and saying, diese Locken wurden ihm am 2. März 1823 in den Tagen seiner Genesung von der Krankheit abgeschnitten, which is like a medieval uh, documentary for uh, a relic to, to show its um, authenticity. 
um, uh, that was then stuffed into the slightly larger envelope. And actually, the shelf mark for is a is octavo because uh, the um, uh, envelope is uh, so small. So to end our overview of um, treasures, both of the materiality and the digital representation, we invite you to explore further uh, the treasures by uh, subscribing to the Polyglot uh, magazine, where you will find not just uh, the famous uh, uh, poets recorded in the 19th century, but a wide array of contemporary uh, musings and reflections by colleagues and uh, students from modern languages. Thank you for joining us on this um, quick tour of some of the treasures of the Taylorian. There are several ways you can continue to engage with the uh, treasures. Obviously, you can look at the facsimiles we've got on our editions website. There are also some print um, publications of some of the editions. So this one um, was of von der Freiheit, um, one of the Reformation pamphlets. This one is um, of the, the White Rose Resistance Group. It was based on an exhibition held in the library and also contains lots of new original translations by students. Um, there are several more print books available and more in the making as well. Yeah, and uh, we tried to make it as accessible as possible by also uh, providing print your own pamphlet facilities on the website. So uh, I think that works particularly well with the uh, uh, Salmon von Ablass und Gnade because that was a very quickly produced, just one broadside. So we have reconstructed from the two editions that are in the Tellorian, the two broadsides, how they would have looked like coming fresh from the press. And uh, I use it to play with my students what the difference. So the same text but uh, presented for a different public, you just fold it twice and um, then can read your uh, little booklet at home. And we very much hope that next year uh, uh, round we will be able to show you actually how from this fold your own pamphlet it became a proper print edition and take you into room two and show you the exhibitions there. Thank you for joining us.